Good evening, book lovers, and welcome to another edition of I Just Read a Book. Wow! Okay, enough of that. Um, yes, I'm back with another book review, a book I've just read. Yeah! And today I'm going to be talking about this one, which is The Age of Miracles by, I've got your name, Karen Thompson Walker. Wow, so first let me remember by saying this took me like two days to read and that's a good thing. Um, my, some of my most favourite books ever I've read in like a matter of hours. For example, the last in the Hunger Games trilogy, no, Mockingjay? Was it? Yes, Mockingjay, I read in six hours. Um, so let's just have a brief plot so you know what I'm rambling on about. The world has shifted on its axis. Um, resulting in the days growing longer and in that first day when the news first breaks they have gained I think it's an hour. At the dawn of the next day took longer to arrive and f that's a concept that took me a while to get. Yeah not surprising really but um, yeah it was a concept I struggled with. I kept reading the background what does that mean? And then I was like oh I get it. So the book follows the consequences of this because um, it doesn't stop, it keeps going, the days keep getting longer um, and uh, it focuses in on one particular family, one little girl in particular um, I think at the time of the incident she's 11, 10 or 11, something like that and so it's told through her eyes um, What I loved about the book is that it's not a book about a disaster it's a book about a family that are going, that are living through the disaster. <laughs> it's not just about that, it's about how the event is. Oh, see, now I've completely lost my train of thought. Uh, not just about that, la la la, and they keep going. Oh, it's just annoying. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. I don't suppose you know. No, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so they've got this big thing hanging over their heads, but it's it's also about the fact that they just days continue on, you know, apart from obviously the, the obvious effects, you know, their days carry on relatively normally. It's what's at the core of the book is just human beings' ability to just get on with it, to just keep going, to keep plugging, you know, even in the face of all these disasters, all kind of building up one under one after the other even. And the planet still still turns, not quite the right angle, but it's, you know, they keep going. And I think that's, that was say, one of the key things that I loved about it. You think what you like about the human race in general, and there was not a lot of things to compare us with. We do have this ability to adapt and to grow and to adjust and this fierce determination to survive and to live. And I think that's what comes across in this book you know, is the same thing, you know, there's this huge catastrophe. At the same time, we've got all these wonderful, well, I say wonderful, but you've got all these um, family-type issues going on as well. I mean, the title itself, Age of Miracles, comes from, I never heard this expression before, but I quite like it. It's used to describe the age when a kid is growing up, so from maybe sort of 10, 11, depending on how early they develop, um, up to obviously sort of teens, that sort of little few years, or ten year gap when just everything changes um, and that's called the age of miracles and of course the little girl is going through her age of miracles in the face of this huge great worldwide catastrophe and you know so she's still she's doing things that a normal girl would do but at the same time she's constantly thinking would this be happening if the world wasn't changing the way it was, you know, would I still be doing this? Would this have still happened? So there's all these questions and everything, and probably the truth is probably yes, they probably still would in some respect. But I say that's what's wonderful is because she's still growing up and she's still, you know, going through all the things that we did when we were kids, you know, going to school, losing friends, gaining friends, fancying boys, all that kind of stuff, but I say she's having to do it almost in adversity really. And that's I think what I loved about it is it was quite subtle. It wasn't, it wasn't flashy. You know, you think of disaster movies and they're all big explosions and stuff, that's not what this book is about. But it, it draws you in the more you read. I mean, I didn't realise, I think, the first night I started reading it, I, before I knew it, I got like that far in. And I was like, oh my god. And it's just, it's very, really well written, really well done, really well executed. You know, you, you love the characters and how each of them reacts 
to what's going on. Julia's a very intriguing character as well. I mean, she's writing, obviously, for, as an older person, but still remembering it as she was then, so as a child, starting to bloom, as it were. No, it's very understated, I think is quite a good way to describe it. It's not, like I said, it's not brash, it's not flashy, but all the time you'll kind of, you get this sense of something building. You get all these ideas in your head of what's going to happen and everything. Yeah, it's just, it's really, it's really good, really good. Um, I'm afraid it's not out yet. This one hits shelves, at least in the UK. Are you going to even tell me when you're released? No, because that would be stupid. Why would we tell you when our book's coming out? Maybe it's on the inside. Oh, come on! Okay, well, it doesn't say, for some reason, anywhere on the book when it's released, which is just stupid, unless I'm being stupid and I'm, like, not seeing it, but I'm pretty sure oh, there's nothing on here. But, um, anyway, I'm pretty sure it's out June. So, pick it up. It'll obviously be in the adult section, because it's an adult title, but it is really, really well worth a read. I'm not, uh, I'm not doing this book any justice whatsoever. I had all these really intelligent things to say, and they just trickle out of my nose. Um, all I can say is, is read it. When it comes out, pick it up and give it a try. Alright, so this is the part where I usually pull another book from somewhere around here and I say, look, this is what I'm reading next. You'll notice there's nothing. I have no other book. Um, and uh, that's because I have decided to change how I do my videos on YouTube. Um, I will still be doing videos. That's the main thing. I will still be doing videos. They just probably won't be quite as frequent. I know you're probably thinking, could you actually do any less videos? Is that even possible? It is. Trust me. Um, but I'll say the main thing you'll notice is I won't be doing the I Just Read Video videos anymore. I Just Read a Video? Mm. I won't be doing the I Just Read a Book videos anymore. Instead, I'll be going for the book haul style, where I just show you the books that I'm planning on reading in the coming months. I'm not quite as hyper as I usually am, but that's because it's a Saturday and I have to go to work tomorrow. Which is never fun. <laughs> Cue the yawn. Ah, which is attractive. You can see my flaring nostrils. So thank you for subscribing and watching. I really appreciate it. And if I don't do a video for a while, just keep poking me in the various places where I lurk and I'll try and... Not quite out. Um, so, here on that rather subdued note, I'll see you soon.